the night country takes us one by one. I'm Damien Holbrook from TV Guide Magazine and TV Insider, and I am talking with Kaylee Reese and Jodie Foster, the leads of the new and phenomenally complicated True Detective. It is, you you guys, first of all, Kaylee. Yeah. Hi. What the her? You're amazing. Thank you. <laughs> she Thank is. You. Thank you so much. Like with the teeniest, tiniest IMDb, and you just walk in and dominate. <laughs> Man, you know, the best kept secret, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, and I love this character. I love, so, so much to talk about. So let's first talk about Jody. This is, you know, this property has been such an interesting kind of thing. You know, it's, it's whole thing. What attracted you to this one? Yeah, look, True Detective means a lot to all of us. You know, those of us who watched True Detective 1 and were just had our minds blown and wanted to continue in the lineage. I feel very humbled in front of that. Like, ooh, we're a part of the true detective tradition. Uh, there's a lot to live up to. Um, and I was just super psyched when I read the first uh, draft of the first episode one. Um, and there was a lot of changes that happened after that, but um, it's really the vision of Issa Lopez that just drew me aboard. And then uh, she showed me some tapes of this one over here. At first she just showed me just your picture and I was like, yes. <laughs> and then um, I got some extraordinary tapes of, of Kaylee acting and I was just like blown away by how fierce and, and driven and, and connected that she is and uh, the rest is history. So obviously this all happened during COVID. So there was no like chemistry read or anything like that. Uh, what was it like for you auditioning for this and then getting, I, I, I spoke with Issa and you guys got like four weeks of rehearsal time, which is amazing. But what was it like doing it on Zoom and then going right into live rehearsals? I mean, I don't really have much to compare it to. So it was kind of like, oh, this is what we do. Oh, this is normal or whatever. So um, when I first did the audition and I first read what, um, what this was going to be and I was so intrigued by the story, I was like, okay, I want this part. I can so, so see this. Um, being me, and when once I learned I got this, I was like, oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> like it was, and Issa was like, congratulations, I'm sorry, and I was like, <laughs> I'm so conflicted. But getting there and being able to get take on this opportunity, it was like, all right, I'm not gonna mess this up. This is an opportunity of a lifetime, and what better way to be in the beginning of my career than to be with a legend and somebody I look up to and so talented, and then find out she's cool as hell too, man. <laughs> and then just to be there and have a collaborative team and Issa's amazing masterpiece of a story. It was, you know, I had a fangirl moment. I was like, oh my God, it's Jodie Foster. Oh my God. But it was just so refreshing that everybody was there to tell this amazing story. And we just were all happy to be there and go through this whole thing together. Yeah. Kind of like the Peace Corps in adventure. Yeah. Yeah. In Iceland, out of all places. Kaylee, how would you describe your character? How would you say, what would you say about Evangeline? I mean, to put it really quick, she's a, a badass with a big heart. And is, she's fearless, powerful, um, and she's very, very nurturing. Um, and she has a crave to have to find justice. Um, and she doesn't do things, she's very intuitive. Um, she has to feel something. Um, and then on the flip side, she has a hair trigger. And she will remind you why she is and where she is, um, and why she is who she is very quickly. Um, it doesn't matter who you are, Danvers or the next person. They're, they're kind of opposites, and yet they're both complicated and messy, and they have a lot of duality. Um, Liz is wedded to her intellect and we wedded to the intellectual side of doing things and doesn't want to give any credence to the instinctual side or to the uh, em empathic side, um, spiritual side. Um, she's mean, she's a jerk, she tells really bad jokes that aren't funny to anyone else but her. Um, she needles people and alienates everyone. Uh, but she, she, as much as she hates Dan, as much as she hates Navarro, I think she has a lot of respect for her and would do anything to, you know, do anything for her in Foxhole. I think my favorite moment in the movie, in, this, in the show, is there's one moment where um, Kaylee Navarro is beating somebody to a pulp, and I kind of pull her off, and then I just put her in the corner and I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was just like, no, you yeah, stop that, it. That pretty, no, kind of like stop. you do to a dog or to a child. It was yeah. like. No more beating him up. Oh, there like, is there oh. is a level there is a level of them being and I really do like the the idea of like they're very much peers. Yeah. They are they're both very very strong in their jobs. They're very they're very in their lives. You know, like even though Danvers is kind of detached from a lot of stuff, they they sh they do show up for people, which I found very interesting because usually 
with a story like this, like one of them's like has the empty life and they go home to an empty home and the other, but I like the fact that these, both of these women have kind of full lives outside of the job. Um, well, they're women. So it's a funny thing that happens when you put women in a character and you, you, you got a female gaze as a director, you, you do start understanding that part of what women are is relationship and connectivity even if they hate that relationship and hate that connectivity, they're still connected still in a relationship. In it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there, but with them together, there is, there's a level of, um, I won't say it's, it might be mutual respect, but the fact that they give each other so much shit on yeah. both sides, mm -hmm. yep. like there's a parody there in that, like they can both give and take. I think they both like it because it touches a part of them that nobody else really get. They don't yeah. really get to touch those parts on an everyday life. So it's like, I know what she's gonna say, and I, you know, I'm gonna come back with some yeah. bullshit. It's you intimate. I mean? It's yeah. intimate, and you can dish it out and take it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a comeback. Whereas other people would get offended or they would yeah. take it personally. Mm -hmm. um, there's a smirk. There's always a smirk every time that they say something that people should not say to each other. <laughs> yeah. There's like a little smirk of like, ha ah. yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. So thank you both so Bye. much. And everyone, do not miss True Detective on Max. It is, it's so good.